Hello everybody. Welcome to this screencast. We are going to continue in what we've done before. We created a very simple language, if you remember, a domain specific language to define constants. So this screencast, just like the first one, is targeting MPS beginners, people who want to learn how to use MPS and want to see some tips and tricks on how to use MPS and how to overcome some common obstacles that you might face when you start working with MPS. So just to refresh your memory a little bit, uh, the DSL we created last time allows you to create constants like this and this will then get generated into Java class which looks like that. Now looking at the generated code you obviously you will spot uh, a couple of problems and limitations of the generated code for example, the class should be final, shouldn't it? Now, a class containing only constants shouldn't be allowed for uh, extension. Second, well, the fields obviously shouldn't be private. That's a mistake of mine, which we'll fix in this uh, in this demo quickly. And third, and most importantly, we are currently limited to integer constants. We should remove that constraint and and allow other types. And we should probably also allow more allow more complex initializers. Ex whole expressions, not only constant values. So let's go through these steps gradually. So first, the minor fixes. Uh, the class should be final. To do that, I just go to the generator, the place, the root template where I generate a class, open the inspector, and in the inspector I see final, and that should be set to true. That's That's the trick. Uh, second, the fields should be public, not private. So I go to the generator that generates uh, the individual fields. This is this one. And now instead of private, obviously we'll go public. Now looking at the generator, I noticed it's unnecessarily complex. Since the template fragment, the important part of this, is a static field uh, declaration, which is a concept by itself, we don't need to wrap it with the surrounding context. We don't need it for anything inside our template fragment. So what we can do happily here, I'll just take, I'll just copy the template fragment as it is, and remove the class and paste in the template fragment. Right? Or we could start from scratch, you know, we could just have, you know, this should, we could just start with, ah, uh, sorry, uh, we could just start with uh, static field, uh, static field uh, declaration, and now we would go integer, and we would give it some name, and we would gradually wrap it, you know, with uh, with node macros and property macros. So this would be the best way to do that. Now, since we already have all this defined, we we won't go through that again. So we simplified we simplify the generator for uh, for the constant. Now if we rebuild the language we will see our changes uh, they have taken effect immediately. So going to our sandbox project to, to the uh, constant set we have, if we regenerate we see the class is now final, the fields are now uh, now public, static, final, but they are still integers, so we're going to address that problem now. So going to the constant definition, now going to the structure, we see that currently each constant has a property called value of type integer. So here it is where we hard code or where we restrict the values to be only integers. We obviously don't want that restriction. So the value no longer can be a property since we want you know expressions and we want them of any type. So we'll just remove this and go to the children and create a child element of type expression. Now, unfortunately, expression is not included at the moment, so we can't use it unless we import the model containing expression. 
So now one way would be to go to the language itself and say in the module properties, you know, in the dependencies, we want to import the language. There's a simpler way though. Instead of doing that, we can go Command R and say, I want to import a model that contains expression. That's the one. This expression, this is the one we want. Now, expression is in base language structure, but you know, here's a hint that we could probably import the whole base language, which is what we want to do. So now we get the whole base language as a dependency. Well, if we go, so we can use happily expression. If we go back to the language, its properties and dependencies, now we see in dependencies base language is there. So it was included, well, obviously we could include it ourselves through this dialog. JetBrains, MPS, base language. You know, with this notation you can just go down to you know whatever language you wanna uh, you wanna depend on. Okay, so back to our to the code. So now we have an expression. We give it a name. We'll call it initializer, and it should there should be exactly one initializer. So now the structure is updated. So now our constant has a child, which is an expression of any type at the moment. Editor still refers to the old value thing. Well, we will we, remove that and 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 add uh, a field to edit the initializer. Now, initializer is an expression, so it knows how to edit itself. We don't have to care about more here. Anything? Yeah, uh, we can move on to the generator. So here's the generator. So this is how we translate the constant into Java code. Uh, now obviously the initializer is wrong because if we open up the inspector, the inspector for uh, the inspector for this macro refers to no dot value. We no longer have value, so this has to go. And we'll add a new initializer again, a dummy value. And we will just create a copy. We will add a copy source macro uh, referring to node initializer. So now we will place the initializer there, and again, expression knows how to generate it itself into Java. So all is done. Now on this line, there's still one thing that's not correct. Uh, I wonder whether you can spot it. But if we go a little bit to the left, here the thing that says integer is obviously not right because now we at the moment we are hard coding the information that the type of this expression is integer but obviously it may not be integer now the expression can be anything so also the type can now be anything so we need to change the type depending on the type of the initializer so that's what we'll do so we'll say well this guy actually should be a copy source macro that will put in instead of the int text. It will put in whatever the type of the initializer is. So now instead so now we'll get you know the the correct type of whatever we we pass in. Good. Time to rebuild. So the language is now ready. Now we can go and uh, play with the sandbox for a while. So we go maximum should be 100, minimum could be 0. Well, since, since we are allowed to use whole expressions, obviously we can go plus 10, you know, whatever. So we can use expressions as we like them. Uh, we can use different types. So we can use string, we can use booleans, well anything. So we define constants, they can use expressions for initialization, they can use any uh, any types. And now if we generate Java out of this, 
Now notice the type is correct. You know, the first two are integers, this one is string, and this one is boolean. So we achieve what we wanted. Now, the last thing that might be interesting to some of you, what if you don't want to allow expressions? You really want just plain values, not, not expressions is 0 plus 10. How to do that? Now, expressions can be anything, can be com pretty complex, um, pretty complex initializer. So you just want that, but if you want just values, how to restrict that? One possibility, just to show you how these works, uh, one possibility are constraints. So let's use constraints to restrict this. So to disallow, to disallow uh, complex expressions, but only allow for constants in initializer. So we go to, to the constant concept and for the constant concept we can declare constraints. So here it is. So here is a constraint. So now we can specify you know, uh, some constraints on the concept. So we might say that it doesn't allow expressions, complex expressions as its children. So it doesn't want to be parent of those. So let's do that. So we go can be parent and in here we will define a function that returns true or false depending whether the child uh, is or is not allowed for uh, for the constant concept. Uh, well, so to do that here quickly, we will only exp well, I will only state explicitly which uh, concepts are allowed. So I will say if the child concept so the concept of the you know that someone is trying to add to my constant as an initializer is a sub concept of and now I will explicitly allow some some constants so let's say integer so integer literal I have to import that one so Command R integer. Oh, oh, sorry. In integer literal, this is the one. So integer literal. So now we allow. Uh, so we allow if the child child concepts that are subconcept of integer literals. Also, we would like to allow. Uh, string, string liter literals, and we might also allow boolean constant. So, well, this this could work. Uh, since we are uh, well, since our constant concept has only one child, we always know, you know, that it's trying to become the initializer. Now, if a constant concept had more, if uh, you know, in here in the in the children, if we had more of them, more of possible children, now we would have to distinguish in here using the link thing. So, uh, so what we can do now, we can go if link get presentation which is kind of the name of uh, of the of the child role uh, if it was um, you know so we could we could go you know if it if it's equal to and now the role which in this case initializer so if it is initializer then you know we would we would apply this but obviously since we have only one uh, one child um, concept, we don't have to do that. So I rebuild the language so that we can check how constraints apply to, to the code in the, in the sandbox. So now notice, well this line is underlined, so now it says we can't we can't have plus operation as a child of uh, the minimum constant. But if we remove now if we remove that, now it's everything everything's fine. Well, okay, that's all for today. Thanks for watching and see you next time. Goodbye.